Hi guys, and welcome back to the developer series. This is my hubby Alfie, welcome back. G'day guys, hope you're well. This week we're going to be talking about the stages of a development. I've actually, um, will be answering a lot of people's questions because I do often get um, lots of DMs saying, I have no idea where to start if I was to become a developer or if I was interested in becoming a developer. Um, uh, what are what are the different stages? Who needs to be on the team? There's a lot to cover to answer a question like that. Um, and we're not gonna go into too much detail because it will be very overwhelming, but we will go through the different stages. And if you do want extra information at all on any stage, please DM me. We're more than happy to um, email you or contact you back about your specific questions. So what we're gonna do to answer the question of what are the stages of a development and who do you need to hire? Um, we're gonna break it up into three different parts. Um, the first part will cover laying down the foundations. So that will involve like hiring a mortgage broker, hiring an accountant, and um, also hiring either a real estate agent or a property development professional to help you out um, with a feasibility or make sure you're making the right decision. Um, with your purchase and that it's actually going to make you money. Um, then in part two, we're going to go through the plans and permits for the town planning phase. Um, so that will inc include uh, purchasing the site, um, hiring a designer to put the plans together and submit to council and actually achieving a planning permit, um, and then a subdivision permit. Then in part three will be um, everything about the build. So we will let you know everything about um, the documentation that you need to put together to get a, a, a to give to a builder so that they can start the build and get a build permit. Um, and we will also speak to you about uh, the subdivision certification and then um, eventually selling or leasing the property that you've purchased. <music> So we'll start today with part one, which is laying down the foundations. Um, so we'll start with hiring a mortgage broker. And I'm, well, we both are really big advocates of our own uh, mortgage broker. I don't believe we would have been able to do a lot of the things we have without one. Do you want to talk about, first of all, where do you find one? Everything you need to know and why do you even need one? Um, a mortgage broker is someone that works independent from sort of the banks. Um, so you could go to CBA tomorrow and talk to a branch manager or a banker there and um, they'll offer you the services that they've got. So their packages um, and they might have multiple, but a broker will look at, you know, your top tier banks, um, then your, your mid tiers um, and then even potentially some private. So they give you a bigger um, and they broaden the opportunities, I suppose. Um, so hence the reason why mortgage brokers are my selection to go to. Uh, might not be for others, but for us it's worked quite well. Um, uh, you've got to go to the mortgage broker to, to learn what your capacity is to borrow um, and what you've got to play with, obviously. Um, another thing to be mindful of is your serviceability. Um, that's got to stack in mind because that's going to be a key factor to see how much money you're going to be able to uh, borrow uh, through the banking sectors. Um, so then probably the next stage will be, you know, get yourself um, a good accountant if you haven't already got one um, and just learn about the, you know, the way you sh should structure your, your future, um, you know, projects, whether it's, you know, in a um, individual in your own name or your partner's name, uh, in a company um, or in a trust or in any other capacity, but um, generally those are the three um, that most purchases become. So this is something that definitely confused me when we started, so making sure that you put everything in a trust to protect your family or to protect your assets. There are lots of reasons why you would use a trust and you don't have to know or understand everything about it. That's why you hire an accountant and that's a very important step because yeah. an accountant's gonna help you understand all that and they're gonna take care of it for you as well. They will set the trust up um, 
and it's definitely something to consider. So don't forget point number two um, to get in touch with an accountant. Yeah, yeah. Um. Um, and then our third step is um, hire a real estate agent or a property development professional who can help you with a, a feasibility or understanding if your site um, is going to work or the numbers are going to stack up. So do you want to talk about... Yeah, you, you look, you won't be able, you're not going to go out and hire a, um, a real estate agent. You're just going to build relationships with them um, and they're going to keep in touch with you when they've got a property um, that's on the market or about to hit on the market. They'll, you know, give you, a t they'll touch base with you um, via email or, or phone. So what do you do? You just cold call just, them? Just build relationships. The ones in the area that you're yeah. looking at? Yeah, yeah, I would. I, I personally would just, you know, um, Obviously, when you know what your budget is, then um, you can start targeting that market. Like, there's, if you've got, say, half a million dollars to spend, there's no point going and trying to build relationships in Turak because you're just not going to get anywhere. Um, so, once you sort of get a guidance about what your budget is, then you start targeting that the, the market that will be tailored to you um, based on your budget. You know, I've got a saying that the squeaky wheel will always get oil. So, just keep hounding them. Just Keep touching base with them, um, you know, uh, and and something will come out of it. Um, or a, prof, a professional, um, uh, you know, property development. Rebecca touched on uh, is a person or a company that sort of specialises in this type of stuff, so where they, you know, they acquire a property for you. They'll charge a fee for that, uh, but they'll charge that. They'll, they'll get something of a, like a feasibility report for you. Um, so you've got a really good guide. Um, to see what you could potentially do and what you could potentially make out of the property developments. And, uh, and return on investment is obviously huge for um, a developer. And if you don't know, if you're unsure of what you're actually gonna make in the end, then it's worth hiring these people. It's worth going to speak to them and work together as a team yeah. um, to, make your, to make your money. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, in order to make money, sometimes you have to spend money. And um, if you don't have the experience, um, then you want to be in a position um, where you surround yourself with the best people that you can potentially find um, that are going to support you, educate you, so you go through the channels and you go through the experience and even say in the next one or the following or whatever in the future that you might not need these people again. But the first ones and the first couple are probably the you know the, the real key um, experiences that you need to sort of get the best people around you. Um, so I, I, I've used one in the past when I first sort of started. Um, it's worked well for me. Um, others might not. You hear some horror stories. So that it's selecting the right one is really, really important. Okay, so there you have it guys. That's the start of um, laying your foundation, hiring the right people from the beginning. So we've got the mortgage broker, an accountant, and a property development professional. Um, we will be back with part two, where we'll go into town planning. This is my favorite stage. I love it. I love the, des the design phase. Um, so we will see you next week for that one. See, see you later. You see you guys. Bye.